Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're watching last week, you will have seen me start on the construction of a simple test track in order to set up and test a signaling system that my next railroad build customer has requested. This week, I will install the signals and run some tests. So without further ado, let's just head out to the workshop and get busy. Today's task is to hook up the Atlas signal bridge to my signal test track. Here it is, just lying on the tracks at the moment. I had to start off by drilling four 5 16 inch holes under the legs, pass all the wires through. There's the plugs hanging down here. It was a bit deceptive. I thought quarter inch holes would be sufficient, but they weren't. I had to enlarge them slightly. And I also have these brand new circuit boards from N3iX. Robin Becker has developed them. They're actually one of his products, which by the time this video goes live, should be available through his website. I'm actually the first customer to use them. And the idea behind these boards is that we just take these Atlas plugs that come on the signals and plug them straight into the board with a jumper cable going to his signal board attached to a quad LN. The idea of this being that it just makes the Atlas signals plug and play with JMRI. And each board as purchased comes as six boards close together, enough for six signal heads, and you just break them off to the right length. For the case of this signal bridge, I need all six of them, so I'm not gonna do any breaking. I'm just gonna take one of these and attach it directly under the railroad as it is. But for the cantilever bracket that goes the other end, I will only need four. So I'll break two of them off and use them for a single mast somewhere else. Anyway, I can't do any of that while I'm holding the camera. So I'm just gonna put it down and get to work and I'll see you later. Don't go away. Well, here is that board mounted under the test track with the signals plugged into it. I couldn't get it as close to this board as I wanted it because of the length of the wire supplied with the signal. The way to fix it would have been to mount this board directly where, under where the signal's going, which would have put it in the window. I didn't want to do that. So I'm just going to need longer wires between the two. But that's no big deal. The one for the other end of the junction, I mounted directly below where the bracket signal is going. You may notice that I've broken two of the boards off the end and I've saved those for the next single mast that I do. There's only four heads at this end of the junction instead of six. The first one is already plugged in. I've got to go get the rest of my wires. I really like the design of this board because it's clearly marked which wire goes where and which way around it is. Each board has four sets of three pins and they're labeled with you know, white, black, red at the, from the bottom. And it's also labeled as to which LED it refers to. This is the red one, the green and the yellow. And then the other set of three pins is used for a jumper and that gets moved depending on whether your signal is common cathode or common anode. But as I say, everything is nicely labeled so it should be easy. I've just got to get the rest of the wires and then plug everything in. Don't go away. Well, that is everything wired up, both for the six head gantry up there and for the four head bracket signal over here. Everything that I've still got to do will be on the computer using JMRI. Yes, I know these wood blocks at the base of the signal are unsightly, but I don't want to glue it in place on this test track because the intention is to reuse it on the railroad once I finish with the test. So those blocks are just stuck down with double-sided tape and they wedge the mast in place. That way it stays put without any glue. Well, I'm back out in the workshop again with the computer set up and attached to the test track again. For the last couple of days, I've been inside working on it for a few hours using it in simulator mode, which allows me to get all the JMRI logic set up inside in the comfort of my office, where I can sit down in a nice warm office, comfy chair, 
and have the other computer beside it so I can work on one screen with the help menus on the other screen. Anyway, I think I've got it right. It appears to work inside, so now I've got it hooked up to the test track again and let's make sure everything is working properly here. I'm not sure how well this is going to work. Last time I tried making a video recording showing the signals, it didn't work out very well. The problem is it's not necessarily showing the right color. At the moment, all aspects on this signal are showing red. All six heads have the red LED lit, which is the bottom one. Although I think the color is more likely to look something different. At least it did last time, it looked more yellow. So pay attention to where the light is lit rather than what color it appears on the screen. Well, it wasn't quite right just now. I've been back in the house and I think I've corrected it. Let me try again. Okay, all aspects are red at the moment. So I have my train approaching the signal. I'm going to clear that signal. It's gone to green. It's showing the straight route through and the signal ahead of it for the next block is also showing green. Okay, I'm not touching the computer at the moment. Okay, it's now gone red because the block is occupied. Hopefully when we pass the next signal, that one down there will turn red and the one here will go yellow. Okay, well this one didn't go yellow. In fact, it should be green by now because the next one's gone yellow. I don't know why that didn't work, but at least we're getting close now. So I need to dive back into the documentation again and find out what I'm doing wrong. Well, I discovered what I was doing wrong yesterday. I had it set up so that you couldn't have signals clear at both ends of the same block for conflicting movements. And I've now been informed that GMRI doesn't work that way. What I have to do is set up a CTC system on top of it to get that logic in. So I've removed the conflicting signals requirements and let's just now run another test. Alright, the signal goes down to red as expected and it should stay red until I pass the next green signal. And now it's gone yellow, which is correct. And it's gone back to green. So that is now working correctly. and the oncoming bracket signal was also working correctly. And of course, while I was watching the bracket signal at the other end, I wasn't able to watch the signals this end as well. So I will just have to check the video after I go inside. And assuming that that one was working correctly, I will call this test a success. Well, that's all for this week's video. I didn't show all the tests, but I showed the relevant ones. And I'm glad I took the trouble to build that test track 
because it helped me to find a couple of issues that would have resulted in redoing work if I dived straight into the railroad build. So I'm just going to sign off here and I hope to see you back next week. In the meantime, thanks for watching and bye for now.